This video is strictly educational and for security awareness only. I will not demonstrate or encourage illegal activity, provide commands, downloads, or step-by-step -step exploitation techniques. Everything here is about understanding how these internet tools work so defenders and developers can build safer apps. Quick friendly note, I'll mention internet tool names for learning and research, but there won't be any links, setup guides, or how-tos. Think of this as a guided tour of the toolbox security pros use to defend, not a how-to for wrongdoing. Imagine being able to look inside an app as it runs, not to break things but to understand them and make- I once chased a crash that only happened on certain phones. Static checks didn't help, but a mix of decompilation and runtime inspection showed the real cause. Static plus dynamic plus instrumentation equals understanding. Today, we'll outline seven internet tools that give you those views and how they fit together responsibly. Frida is a dynamic instrumentation toolkit that attaches to running apps so you can observe and modify behavior in real time. Basically, it lets you watch what functions are doing as the app runs. You can see what goes in, what comes out, and even tweak things on the fly. For defenders, that means you can debug weird crashes, validate if runtime checks are working, or test fixes before rolling them out. Just a quick heads up, only use this on apps you own or have explicit permission to test. Objection builds on Frida to offer quick, practical runtime tests without reinventing the wheel. It's great for checking things like whether SSL pinning is really working or just taking a fast peek at what's in memory, all without needing to code up new tools from scratch. The real strength is speed and having that investigator mindset. It's perfect for an initial runtime probe when you want to validate your hunches. But remember, this is still for authorized testing and defensive verification only. MobSF automates static and dynamic analysis and produces audit-style findings you can act on. Basically, it steps into the role of an auditor for your mobile apps. It scans APK files, flags risky permissions, hunts down hard-coded secrets, and detects suspicious patterns that could spell trouble. In a team setting, MobSF fits right in. You can run repeatable scans and generate reports that developers can actually use. But you know, it's important to remember that automated findings often need a bit of human review to really figure out which fixes to prioritize. ApeTool unpacks APK internals, resources, manifests, and lower-level code so you can inspect how an app is built. When you dig into resources and manifests, you get a clear look at what permissions the app is asking for and how its assets are structured. For example, you might use App Tool to double check how an app declares permissions or to see what libraries it bundles inside. It's kind of a dependable, old school tool for reverse engineering, perfect for defensive analysis. JADX converts bytecode back into readable Java like source so you can follow program logic. This is super useful for making code reviews easier, auditing third-party SDKs, or just spotting suspicious logic that might otherwise go unnoticed. Just keep in mind though, that decompiled code is more of a guide than a perfect copy. You'll still need some human review to really understand what's going on. So Androguard is uh, essentially a Python toolkit designed for automated and scriptable analysis of APK and DEX files. It's pretty nifty. One of the key features I'd say is its ability to automate tasks, which is super helpful. You can perform batch scans, create custom detectors, and even integrate it into your existing pipelines. Now imagine this scenario, you're tasked with scanning a whole bunch of apps to find a specific insecure pattern. With Androguard, you can do this at scale, saving you lots of time and effort. It's a powerful tool, but uh, remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Use it wisely and ethically, folks. Drozer historically helped map app components and inter-app communication to reveal exposed surfaces. So, let's talk about what surface mapping actually means. Basically, it's about figuring out which parts of an app are exposed to the outside world and where input can enter. This could be exported activities, services, or broadcast receivers, for example. Even though Drozer itself is a bit dated now, understanding this concept is still super important because new tools keep evolving, but the risks remain. And just a quick reminder, mapping surfaces can reveal sensitive interfaces, so always, always test only with permission. Start with that pot tool, JADX, MobSef, Androguard to form hypotheses, 
what permissions, libs, or suspicious code exist. Then use JADX plus app tool to read logic and manifests to validate those hypotheses. Next, use MobSF or AndroGuard for bulk scans and repeatable reports, so you don't have to do everything manually. After that, move to Frida or Objection to confirm whether identified checks are actually enforced at runtime. And finally, apply Drozer style thinking to make sure exported components and interprocess communication don't expose risk. The aim is remediation and learning, not exploitation. Only test apps you own or have explicit permission to test. Document everything. Report vulnerabilities responsibly to vendors and give them time to fix. And if you're ever unsure, seek authorization or work in isolated lab environments. It's just safer that way. These internet tools are lenses. They let you see, learn, and secure. Use them to protect, not to pry. So which tool should I break down next in a conceptual defender-focused episode? Drop your pick in the comments and I'll cover the concepts and defensive takeaways. No commands, no downloads, just learn.